That's a broader question of political will. Yes, if there is no political will, you're not going to get in progress. But often the lack of political will is a, based on a serious misunderstanding of what the expectation of government, government is. So the first, of course, um, step is to try and raise awareness. Surprisingly, we always assume that the government knows everything. But you'd be very surprised, too, how little they know, particularly about the impact and significance of human rights and business. So again, for civil society groups, you may want to inquire as part of your advocacy progress. Now, do you realize that the UN has adopted this and that you endorsed it, and so on and so forth? You can always make that inquiry. So that often raises the question of awareness. But even where the government is aware and genuinely refuses to push it, um, the guiding principles come in three pillars. The state duty to, uh, duty to protect, uh, the corporate responsibility to respect, and the effective remedy. These are quite independent and yet related uh, undertakings. So if government has no political will, it's a failure of pillar one. In other words, the government's duty to protect. But pillar two still stands quite independently. In other words, nothing should stop you from encouraging or approaching the companies themselves and say, OK, we know you're going to country X. Country X has no political will to do this. But would you consider, on your own, um, to, of doing the right thing. In other words, would you... So you want to push Pillar 1 and Pillar 2 um, separately. But also, when Pillar 1 and 2 collapse, i.e. when, such as the example you have raised, where the companies are looking forward to um, uh, useful direct investment, and, uh, the governments are actually in, inviting them on terms that really don't seem quite right. Then you have the collapse of both Pillars 1 and Pillar 2. Well, that, too, can be approached in a slightly different way. And it's often it's because we have a slightly different expectation of investment. And investment is often driven by profit on very easy and soft grounds over 50 years and so on. And because we've had a model of foreign direct investment, which lasted nearly 50, 60 years, well, uh, the model is changing. And in fact, we on the working group have um, tried to encourage government to create space for uh, an effective uh, space for human rights in foreign direct investment. Now, of course, this is still doesn't answer the question of foreign uh, uh, goodwill, uh, political will. But we've also approached it via other mechanisms. So, for example, we encourage the World Bank not to allow its money or its foreign uh, uh, investment opportunity to ignore human rights. We've also um, uh, entered into arrangements with, uh, uh, what's it called, the, the UN Conference on Trade and Development. And they propose uh, model investment treaties for all states who are members of And in 2012, we were able to get them to adopt a strategy on uh, sustainable investment. And on that standard of sustainable investment, which upon which they've now constructed a slightly new model of uh, uh, investment treaty, uh, it includes a whole section on um, responsibilities rather than just rights of investors. And the responsibilities section will now include uh, respect for the guiding principles and human rights. Now, the reason I mention all of this is that actually we are, the guiding principles or implementing the guiding principles is a bit of a process. And we're doing things slowly and slightly differently. So I'm sure people will wish for all foreign direct investment treaties now to be different. But unfortunately, it will take time. We, we're true. sort of plugging all the necessary rules, the World Bank, the OECD, uh, UNCTAD, the EU, so an individual country. So we now have a new United States model, uh, yeah. FBI, which really takes account of some environmental standards and some human rights. Uh, the EU has adopted a similar standard. The OECD has incorporated essentially the guiding principles. UNCTAD has a sustainable development. Now we go to individual governments that need our help for negotiating these things. And we think uh, the strategy for foreign direct investment will be different with time. So we've got it on the book. 